Hello and welcome to this edition of Middle East Matters on France 24. Coming up, haunted by horror, survivors of so-called salt rooms speak of the terrors inflicted by the Syrian regime at the notorious Sedanaya prison. A new report highlighting the torments endured by thousands who've been detained there. Taking matters into their own hands amid a worsening economic crisis as anger mounts over strict limits on cash withdrawals, Lebanon is hit by a string of bank heists. The branch is held up not by criminals but by depositors seeking access to their own savings. And dancing into the record books, Lebanese dance troupe the Mayas become the first Arabic group to win America's Got Talent. Good to have you with us. Well, first, the primitive mortuaries designed to preserve bodies in the absence of refrigerated morgues. So-called salt rooms were also used to inflict psychological abuse at Sedanaya prison. It's the main centre used by the Syrian regime for the detention and enforced disappearance of political prisoners. The rooms are described in detail for the first time in an upcoming report from the Association of Detainees and the Missing in Sedanaya prison an organisation that seeks justice for former detainees. James Mulholland has the details. On this sheet of paper, Abdul tries to describe the horrors he experienced. He's drawing a room on the first floor of Sedanaya prison, north of Damascus. In 2015, he was held there on terrorism charges, the standard accusation of the Syrian government. Some of the cells were full of salt. This is how I had to walk. There was salt everywhere. My first thought was, curse them, all this salt and they don't put it in our food? After years of malnourishment in the prison, his first reaction, like many others who suffered the same fate, was to taste the salt. And then they all made the same horrifying observation. I could see three bodies. They were all covered in salt. One was on his back, one on his side, one on his stomach. That's the one I tripped over. When I saw that in front of me, I thought I was going to die there. Moatasem Abdel Sata was also imprisoned at Sednaya. In May 2014, on the day of his release, they took him to a similar room on the first floor. He recalls the terror he felt when he saw the mummified bodies. I can't describe it. It was worse than when I was first put in prison. I thought they were about to execute me and put me with them. For many, this psychological torture came on top of physical abuse. These cells, called salt rooms, were makeshift mortuaries for the prison authorities. According to an upcoming report, they were first used in 2013, one of the bloodiest years of the Syrian conflict. We think the salt is used to help keep the rooms sterile. As the bodies decompose, they release fluids. The salt helps to absorb that, and it contains the smell. It also helps keep bacteria and disease from spreading to other prisoners or the guards. According to the Association of Detainees and the Missing in Sedanaya Prison, since 2011, 30,000 detainees have been incarcerated at the facility. Only 6,000 have been released. Those who survived the horrors will carry the trauma for life. The things I saw in that prison, my heart died. Honestly, if someone announced the death of my brother right now, I wouldn't feel anything. According to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, more than 100,000 people have died in Syrian government prisons, either from hunger, torture or disease. Anger on the streets of cities across Iran as demonstrations turn deadly. Protesters have been expressing fury over the death of a young woman who'd been detained by morality police in Tehran. Masa Amini was accused of violating the country's conservative dress code by failing to properly cover her hair. She died in hospital after spending three days in a coma. In symbolic acts of opposition, women have been posting videos online in which they can be seen cutting their hair and burning their headscarves.
shouting death to the dictator in the Iranian capital on Monday evening in reference to the country's supreme leader. Many Iranians protested the death of 22-year-old Mahsa Amini, who died after being arrested by the country's morality police last Tuesday. She was detained for not complying with Iran's strict dress code for covering hair. Her suspicious death sparked protests in the capital and other parts of Iran, like Isfahan and Iran's Kurdish region. Iranians are now calling for an end to the government's strict conservative dress code and the dismantling of the morality police. The government should remove the hijab altogether. Anyone who likes it can wear it and those who don't shouldn't have to wear it. I'm strongly against it because we are talking about a cultural issue. You cannot apply a cultural issue by force. Authorities did not give an explanation as to why Amini was detained, only that it involved the hijab rule. They deny any wrongdoing and claim she died of pre-existing health issues, offering up as evidence this video, without audio or a date, of what they say shows Amini collapsing, but her family insists she had no health problems. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said the U.S. was deeply concerned, demanding accountability for Amini's death, with Iran's foreign ministry rejecting any intervention from the U.S. in response. Amini's death is not the first in which a detainee has died under suspicious circumstances in Iran. In 2012, an activist died after claiming she had been tortured in prison. And in 2003, a photojournalist died while being held in custody by security forces. Most pastors have been locked out of their savings since a financial crisis took hold in Lebanon three years ago. Now some of those customers are taking matters into their own hands by holding up bank branches. One woman has been celebrated as a hero after using what turned out to be a toy gun to demand the return of her savings to help pay for her sister's medical treatment. Our correspondents in Beirut have been speaking to a man who was arrested after carrying out another of these so-called bank heists. Out of jail and treated to a hero's welcome. Bassam Sheikh Hussein is celebrated as he's released on bail. A symbol of public anger boiling over, the 42-year-old father took bank employees in Beirut hostage when he was unable to withdraw much of his savings, which had been frozen as a result of Lebanon's financial crisis. The bank was only allowing me to withdraw $400 from my account each month. I warned the branch manager. I told him that I wanted to speak with his superiors and explain my situation, but he refused. At that moment, I made him understand that he was forcing me to act. The next day, I took my gun and a can of gasoline and went to the bank. Bassam says he does not regret his actions that day and that he would do it again. He, like so many others in Lebanon, are living in desperation in the wake of the economic crisis that began in 2019. If there's no solution with the courts or the bank, I will do it again. Give me what is rightfully mine, otherwise blood will flow. Either I become an assassin or I die. You want to imprison me? Go ahead. You want to kill me? It doesn't matter. I will give my life to get my money back. Bassam is not alone in his outrage, nor in his willingness to use force. There have been a string of attempted bank robberies across Beirut, committed by people wanting to withdraw more than the allotted $200 to $400 a month. The banks and the governor of a central bank have stolen the rights of citizens. We cannot remain indifferent. People are dying in hospitals. Others are unable to get their medicines, while their savings are stuck in banks. I could not send a single pound, a single dollar, a single euro from my own account to my son who traveled to Europe. It's very sad. With the company on the verge of economic collapse, many companies in Lebanon have moved to a cash-based model of doing business. This way, they can bypass the banks and avoid bankruptcy. 
Several companies have closed, others have relocated abroad, maintaining some business in Lebanon. We have decided to stay and fight this crisis by all the means at our disposal. Like all companies, we have moved towards a cash-based system. We no longer deal with banks, it's simple. We no longer trust the banking system. The government has yet to implement reforms required by the International Monetary Fund, including a restructuring of the financial sector and an end to corruption. Among the changes needed to unlock a four-year, $3 billion bailout package. Staying in Lebanon, they practice their dance moves despite fuel and electricity outages and say their country's economic and political woes were never far from their minds. Lebanese dance troupe, the Mayas, have come home to a hero's welcome after winning America's Got Talent, where they wowed audiences and the judges with their hypnotising routines. Monty Francis has the details. Greeted by cheers and back home. The Mayas, an all-female Lebanese dance troupe, still basking in the glow of victory. The Mayas! Coming out on top of the talent competition, America's Got Talent, the first Arabic winners to do so. All of us were waiting to land in Lebanon. We wanted to celebrate with our families and all those who supported us, the Lebanese. The group thrilled audiences and dazzled the judges from their audition right up to the season's finale with their sensational and fluid choreography, inspired by their Lebanese culture. Despite being thousands of kilometers away, the dancers say their country's crippling economic and political crisis was always in the back of their minds. The situation in Lebanon didn't help us when we were practicing together. Sometimes there wasn't fuel, sometimes there wasn't electricity, but we made it happen. The Maya's win has breathed a new sense of pride and joy into Lebanon as it struggles to cope with the crisis. The dancers are set to be awarded Order of Merit medallions by President Michel Aoun. In Parliament, politicians joined the chorus of congratulations. I can't tell you, Mr. Speaker, what an achievement the Mayas have made. They mesmerized the international community with their work day after day. But they were accolades that didn't sit well with the group's choreographer. To the politicians, I say, we don't need you. The Mayas made Lebanon proud without you. Your job is to feed the people who are starving, to provide electricity to Lebanon. In addition to the prestige of their win, the Mayas also walked away with a $1 million prize and the opportunity to headline a Las Vegas show. Well, that's it for this episode of Middle East Matters. Thanks for watching and do stay tuned for more world news here on France 24.